Hey, welcome into the rush. Better late than never with Clay Harbor, NFL vet, Bleacher Report. I'm here in Valparaiso getting ready to do Drake at Valpo for ESPN. Clay, how are you, buddy? Good to meet you. I'm doing great. I'm doing amazing. Um, excited to be here. Appreciate you having me on. Love talking some ball. All right, let's talk about Aaron Rodgers and Pancha Karma. Uh, he said yesterday, I'm just off a 12-day cleanse. I looked up the 12-day cleanse. There's no shot that I'm ever doing it. I don't know about you. Bloodletting, uh, therapeutic vomiting, forced diarrhea. Uh, I mean, it sounds horrific. He says it's the greatest way to decompress after a football season. What do you think? Uh, th that's serious? That's something that, that really happened? Yes! Aaron, Aaron Rodgers really did, did that cleanse. I've never heard of that. Honestly, it's the first I'm hearing about that cleanse. Um, don't sign me up for it. I, uh, I'll do the old-fashioned way, maybe drink a couple green juices and uh, call the day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he literally said to Pat McAfee, I'm just off a 12-day Pancha Karma cleanse. Look that up on Google. And then I did just that. And then he went on to say, you know, it's not for everybody. It's been around for hundreds of years. And people do this to relieve stress. And I looked it up. They get up, you get you up early, you meditate, you journal, you eat a light breakfast, you drink this awful sounding tea, and then they have you for 12 hours, mind you, forced vomiting, bloodletting with either leeches or they'll make little cuts in you. Yes, I'm not kidding. Out of his mind. <laughs> that sounds like something off of a sci-fi, uh, you know, sci-fi movie, sci-fi TV show. Um, but if, hey, if Aaron Rodgers is doing it the level that he was playing this season and obviously seasons pass, I might have to, uh, you know, I'm a big weight room guy, I like to work out a lot. I might have to put that in the old regimen. Who knows? Exactly. Get a good workout <laughs> in and then let's go put some leeches on. Yeah, I, wow. I don't get it. So what is your thought on Aaron? Do you think he returns to Green Bay? They're $45 million over the cap. Devontae Adams is unrestricted. They say they might tag him. Bakhtiari getting paid big money. What do you think about Aaron? Is he staying in Green Bay? I don't think so. Um, you know, he liked Nate, Nate Hackett. I mean, he's uh, Nate Hackett's gone too. You know, now now they got a new offensive coordinator, um, you know, and Matt LaFleur just um, just uh, promoted uh, Adam Stenovich, the offensive line coach who, you know, doesn't seem to have as much um, – as much experience in the passing game as a guy like Nate Hackett. Nate Hackett, I played with him back in Jacksonville. He was the offensive uh, offensive assistant and the quarterbacks coach with me. Big quarterback guy. Now that he's gone, got an O line coach taking you know taking the reins. You know De Devontae Adams might be gone. And the way the season ended, I think Rodgers is gone. And being here in Chicago, a local Chicago, and growing up a Bears fan, I couldn't be more excited about the prospect of him uh, getting out of the NFC North. Okay, so if he gets out of the NFC North, it's wide open. Who's the favorite? I got to think it's Minnesota. Who do you think? You know, I've been thinking about that a little bit. I think it's uh, – I think the Broncos are a possibility. You know, I, I think after Peyton Manning, they, they've had something like, you know, 10 to 12 starting – different starting quarterbacks. They're really looking for a guy. They're a, a season – they're a team that has tried that before, bringing in a veteran quarterback, and it really worked out with them worked out for him with Peyton Manning. I also think that maybe, uh, you know, Oakland, if they're not in on Derek Carr, you know, maybe, maybe goes to Oakland, that division, you got Pat Mahomes, you got Justin Herbert. I mean, you got some, you know, you got some big time quarterbacks in that division. So I'm thinking Denver, Minnesota, Oakland, Oakland, uh, Las Vegas, I'm sorry, um, are some spots. Who is the favorite in the NFC North then? If Green Bay is all in on a rebuild and Aaron says, I'm going to wherever, Vegas, Denver, San Francisco, is it Minnesota, Detroit, Chicago, or is Green Bay still good enough with Jordan Love? I don't think, uh, I don't think Jordan Love's a guy. You know, I, I have some friends, I'm not going to name any names of the Packers that I played with in the past, and they said that Jordan Love is, um, they like him as a person, but as a quarterback, he has a lot to show. So I, I think that Minnesota, you know, they got Kirk Cousins, who actually had a really good season this year. They had some injuries, would be the favorite. Um, obviously, a Bears fan, I got high hopes for him. Um, you know, we'll see what happens. But I, Fields still has a lot to show me. I think he's got tremendous upside. But I think that he 
is, is not where he needs to be yet. And I think that might be a couple of years down the road. He's still very young. So I would, I would say Minnesota and obviously got Detroit with Jared Goff, who's, uh, who's won some games and they came on a little bit at the end of the season, won a few games. I like Dan Campbell, but I still think uh, Minnesota if, if uh, Rodgers leaves. Okay, so here's an interesting one for you. Mitchell Trubisky is an unrestricted free agent. I have always been a fan of Mitch. Uh, I read an interesting article on ESPN.com where they talked to Josh Allen, they talked to Jordan Poyer, and these guys said, this dude is awesome. He's a way better athlete than we were led to believe, and we think he could be a really, really impactful starter in the National Football League. I want to be proven right that I was right on this dude, and so far I'm not. What is your take on one Mitchell Trubisky? I think he was unfairly targeted here in Chicago. It's a tough market to play. If you're not winning a game with the Bears, it's a tough market. I played in Philadelphia. That was tough. Playing here in Chicago is tough. But I like Mitch. He was the number two overall pick. You know, he was 29 and 21, I think, as a starter. He had a pretty decent record, a rating of 87. He wasn't bad. And, and yet he got all this, you know, all this negativity and these, these negative. And he was with Matt Nagy, who has proven that he, he couldn't get it done without Mitch, too. So that leads you to believe maybe it wasn't Mitch. Maybe it was Nagy. Maybe we give Mitch another shot as a team. I think he deserves a shot. You know, four years he played with an offensive coordinator in Buffalo, Brian Dable, who I played with when I was on the New England Patriots. In a little bit of time with Dable, I learned more about the tight end position than I had in my whole career. Dable's a guy that can that can really come in and he can develop players. And I, I him and Trubisky had a great relationship. They talked on the phone. That's why Mitch went to Buffalo knowing he wasn't going to be a starter. Brian Dable could have developed him. We didn't see what, he, what happened you know, throughout the preseason and in and, and the training camp and everything. But I think he deserves another shot. So if you were – Clay takes over Pittsburgh, Denver, Tampa, would you take a shot at Mitchell Trubisky or would you go, oh, I think he deserves a shot, but just not on my team? If, you, if, you're, if you're Tampa and you bring him in to compete with Blaine Gabbert, if you're, if you're just going to hand the job to Blaine Gabbert, I think that's a mistake. I played with Blaine. You know, I think he's a talented guy. You know, he's, he's got a lot of improving to do from the last time I played with him. But you bring him in to compete with a guy, and you don't give him a job, but you give him an opportunity. If he comes into training camp, he's, he's tearing it up. If he comes into preseason, he's showing he's efficient. He's not making those bonehead plays that he did in Chicago, have a solid game, and maybe one big interception here, one big interception there. Then you give him an opportunity. you got to see how he can handle it. He's a veteran guy now, and, you know, a lot of players, uh, you know, take time to develop. And I think that he deserves – you know, he deserves a chance to uh, see if he can get better. Okay, coolest moment being an NFL player, something I never did, never will. I played Division Three football. What is it like being an NFL guy, like every day waking up going, I'm playing in the National Football League? Man, it was, uh, it was an experience. I still miss it to this day. I mean, sometimes I wake up, I uh, think I'm going to make a comeback. You know, 36-year-old man coming back <laughs> on the field with, with a walker and a cane. Who knows? But uh, I, I just love the camaraderie and the competitive nature of it, man. You're out there with your friends. You're, you're in a tight end room with a guy who's, who's like a brother to you. But your guys are competing for the same job. But you're, you're honestly pulling for each other. And you, just, you both are having this friendly competition. And it's really unlike anything I've ever experienced before or since. And I, I really, really enjoyed you know, that aspect. A lot was the camaraderie. A lot was the competitive nature of it. It was um, – it was really a lot of fun traveling and, and, and living my dream. Okay, living that dream or being on The Bachelorette, what's cool? <laughs> I knew it was coming. I knew it was coming. Um, obviously, playing football is cooler. But the crazy thing is, if I'm out in Chicago walking around or at dinner and, and somebody wants to uh, come up and, and take a picture or something, oh, are you a football fan? Never. It's always Bachelor Nation. You get recognized so much more. I didn't realize how big the show was. You know, I know we're talking about Aaron Rodgers, Jordan Rodgers, his brother. It was, it was on the, the, the Bachelorette, and he's a, it's a famous guy from the, from the Bachelorette. It, it's, it's really crazy the amount of people that watch the show and are really invested in it. The, people, the fans are, are, are nice. They really care, and they, you know, they're, they're really a, a good group of people. They call them Bachelor Nation, and, um, you know, a lot of guys even watch it, too, because they're, they're significant others, their spouses, their daughters end up watching the show. And then guys end up getting um, connected on it. Then you'll have a couple of guys. You're, you're out in a bar at a restaurant. But, hey, man, I really liked you on The Bachelorette. And I always think that part's funny when a, when a guy comes up and, and wants a selfie from The Bachelorette. 
Right, because they were watching it because their girlfriend or their wife liked it. All right, I have one uh, other thing for you. Say. Exactly. You played for Sean Payton. Yes. That is one of my favorite coaches in that in the National Football League. I love that dude. And I've never met him. I've interviewed him on the phone. I am a huge Sean Payton guy. What does he like to play for? Man, Sean, Sean Payton, I only played with him for a year, but he's he's all business. He's a tough guy. You know, you better you better have your stuff in line. You better have your stuff in order. You better be ready to run. And you ain't going to get no sympathy. He's a great coach for a reason. But he's a, he's a stern, hard-nosed guy. You know, I love Sean Payton playing for him. He knew you were going to be in a position to win as a team. And uh, obviously, we had Drew Brees back then. Yeah, if those two guys together, you're going to be in a position to, to win every game, you're in. And uh, like playing for him, you had to know your stuff. He was a tough, hard-nosed guy, but you really appreciated that about him. By the way, are you married? I'm not. I'm, uh, I'm still a bachelor. You know, no pun okay, intended. So, okay, so what is it like? Being you walking down a, a, like Vegas or Chicago, like a street where there's a lot of pretty people. What is it like being Clay? You know, it's uh, it's a tough life, but somebody has to live it. Yeah, so, exactly. Uh, it doesn't know. suck. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't suck. It doesn't suck. Well, we, I hope we get a chance to get you back and maybe get you in the studio. And thank you for taking some time. Absolutely. Appreciate you guys having me on. You're the man. There he is, Clay Harbor from The Bachelor, the NFL, and oh, he just walks down the street and he's a stud everywhere he goes. We will be back tomorrow at 5. Have a great rest of your day. Take that.